How you doing? Hey, thank you so much for having me. I uh, really appreciate it. I know we were supposed to be on a couple of uh, days ago, but we didn't get a chance to, to connect, but uh, absolute pleasure to be here. Yeah, all good. Uh, very nice meeting you. So thanks so much for coming on on a Friday. So, but, And uh, it's a beautiful yeah. Friday, too. Great weather. Yeah, I hope everybody... Good weather for uh, the middle amazing. of October. I can't complain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, true. <laughs> so we got a lot to talk about. So um, I'm just going to get your... Got to, uh, so everybody knows who you are. I just pinned your name here. Okay, so let's talk about the Main Street Recovery Act and the Better for People, Smarter for Business Act 2020. So what does that mean for a small business? So look, we've seen, uh, you know, small businesses through this pandemic, uh, you know, they've taken a, a significant sacrifice with, you know, if we look back about like about six months ago, uh, seven months ago at the onset of the pandemic, I don't think any of us could really have predicted uh, the length or what we were up against. Uh, but uh, one thing is for sure, um, you know, the, the impact that uh, it's had on small businesses uh, has been significant. Um, you know, the government's put forward many supports to support them, and there's different ways to support them. So there's ways to support them from, you know, a financial perspective. Uh, there's ways to support them from a uh, regulatory perspective, legislative perspective. Uh, so that's what we're really focused on here is, is really trying to get the best supports possible. Um, so what, I, what we introduced uh, just this past week was like what was unique kind of uh, changes um, that would continue to help businesses uh, during this pandemic. We saw, uh, you know, for example, restaurants uh, needed to, uh, were able to now sell alcohol with their takeout orders, which was never, uh, you know, before allowed, but it gave them an, another revenue stream. Uh, when we're talking about um, items being delivered to these stores, when we had panic buying uh, pandemic, uh, kind of uh, during the start of the pandemic, we had a lot of people trying to buy goods, uh, et cetera. Uh, and it kind of had a big run on all the shelves. The toilet paper was a huge story as you, as you recognize. So allowing the supply chain to really um, work seamlessly and removing restrictions on, on traveling for, for many of these very important uh, supply chain uh, goods. Uh, but more importantly, we put together, uh, you know, a relief package for small businesses to the tune of about $60 million for PPE grants. Okay. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's the big part of it. So a thousand dollar grant uh, for small businesses under 10 employees uh, that can expense their PPE requirements uh, to, uh, to the government. Uh, and we, we also ask them to hopefully um, use that uh, for uh, the purposes of, um, you know, buying Ontario made PPE as well. So how, how easy for, is it for a small business to do this? So there's $60 million uh, allocated to buying PPEs, uh, up to $1,000, if I'm correct? Yep, yeah, that's correct. So how, how easy if, is it for them to actually get this? Yeah, so it's, we're going to try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, the application will be open in about uh, two weeks, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, business, business owners will go online, fill out the application, and provide us their receipts, a copy of the receipts. Uh, and they can be post, uh, uh, they can be all the way from the beginning of the pandemic uh, to uh, all the way uh, up until the end of the year. So they've got uh, that entire time to expense that. This is in addition to uh, for small businesses in the Peel region. So Mississauga, Brampton, Peel, uh, Toronto, um, that have been, uh, they've also had to shut down uh, a second time for this 28 day period that we all know about, especially indoor dining. Uh, there's actually another $300 million program for them um, that will, they will also be able to op apply for it during the same time. And that will cover their utility bills and their taxes, property taxes uh, for uh, this 28 day period. On top okay. of that, they'll also get rent, rent relief as well to the tune of about 90%. Uh, that's a program being delivered by the federal government as well. So significant support being put forward to, to, these, uh, to these businesses, but we're trying to do everything we can to, to help them out. This uh, $3 million funding to, um, how, how easy it, is it for them to apply for that? So that will be another, uh, it'll be an easy process again. So it's uh, in total about $300 million. Um, okay. And what will happen, it will be another online application and it will be direct payments to those businesses that will show us their expenses for that month. And then 100% um, uh, on both the property tax and the electricity or hydro costs will be reimbursed uh, for those, uh, for that 28 day period. Um, and, and that they can apply directly. But those that $300 million is for 
because Brampton, Mississauga, Toronto, and York businesses that have been impacted by the second um, the second uh, phase of the the, the uh, shutdown, if you want to call it lockdown, uh, and then uh, the sixty million dollar program is available to everybody in all of Ontario. Okay, we're go we're going head to head again against uh, Doug Ford's presser right now, so. <laughs> Um, uh, stage two light, uh, I think that's what we've been calling it. Um, if it goes past 28 days, um, does the province have plans to uh, help the businesses that have been most affected even more? Well, I, you know, we've got our budget coming up uh, on uh, in the early days of November where we'll be laying out more supports for businesses. Uh, um, that have been impacted. Uh, you know, we put uh, as soon as we announced uh, that there would be a second set of um, uh, of a uh, you know somewhat of a, a shutdown uh, or a lockdown, we announced immediately three hundred million dollars. The federal government announced immediate ninety percent support in rental payments for for those uh, businesses. That is going to be a tenant direct program. Um, you know, from the last uh, March all the way up until this uh, September. Uh, both governments delivered over, you know, uh, a billion dollars in support for rental payments for those businesses as well. Um, over 550,000 uh, employees benefited from that. Um, so I think, you know, our, our government's going to continue to be committed to supporting uh, small businesses anytime um, and they need that support. Uh, and we're going to be there for them uh, during these difficult times because I think, you know, businesses have really stepped up uh, uh, and played a, a significant role in, in the, during this pandemic, and they've suffered quite a bit. But, uh, you know, the government's going to uh, do whatever they can to, to help them uh, sustain and get through the next couple of uh, days. No, I, I can't imagine what you go through because you're uh, the minister of small business, and most, most of the businesses that are being affected are small business. Um, I, I get a lot of direct messages from gyms, martial arts gyms, restaurants, um, what what do you say to you know the the restaurants that are uh, just hanging on by the fingernail? What what Doug Ford says, you know, um, you know that you know if the lockdown goes more than twenty eight days, or uh, sorry, the stage two light goes more than twenty eight days, uh, you know, there's a good chance they might not open. Like what what do, what do you say to them? You know, I think, uh, you know, from our perspective, uh, you know, one of the hardest decisions we had to make was that second, uh, you know, set of restrictions that impacted both those businesses, um, you know, whether it's the gyms or whether it's the restaurants and, and some of the other banquet halls, et cetera, as well. Um, that's taken a significant toll, not on, only on, on the people making the decisions, but obviously the business owners as well. Um, but everything that we, every decision that we make is fundamentally based off of um, the data that we get from medical health professionals um, and the risk. Um, you know, if we look at Ontario's response to this date uh, and you compare it to any other jurisdiction um, in North America, compared to any state, compared to any country, um, Ontario has really come out of it uh, probably stronger than anybody else because of, you know, the decisive action we were able to take. Um, from an, even from an economic uh, perspective, you know, there was a, a report, I believe it was the CIBC bank that released it from an economic perspective, the measures that we took um, very early on, um, you know, actually helped us get back, get the economy back on its feet a, a lot quicker as well, because, you know, you've got to balance, it's a really tough balancing act, but you've got to balance the, the needs of the economy as well as healthcare. If you don't, if you don't have a, a you know, a society that's healthy, now, uh, if you have people that are too afraid to leave their house because, you know, the rate of infection, COVID is, you know, so prevalent or the, the positivity rate's gotten so high uh, and so many more people are at risk or have the potential of getting at risk, businesses will struggle even more during that time, right? When we look at even our main streets right now, it was so difficult in the first months, you know, even when the restrictions were lifted for people to feel safe when they were going to, you know, a, a retailer, when they were going to the store, like we, we, like, you know, if we remember back a couple months, it was always like, you know, everyone was, you know, probably sanitizing their hands, you know, a lot more than they were probably two weeks ago because they, you know, then they became accustomed to it. They, they believed in kind of, they knew how to prevent it. They, they knew what the steps they needed to, uh, to take as well. Uh, and I think that's probably where, you know, we really want to focus is every decision we make is based on health, the advice of our medical health officers. Uh, and we want to do anything and everything we can to to support them um, during this, and that's why we put so many so many significant you know financial supports for those businesses, whether it's 
paying their property taxes, paying their utility bills, paying, you know, 90% of their rent uh, with other governments, giving them money for PPE um, that, that they've, you know, invested in. So, uh, and more supports to come, you know, never do we ever say that this is it, you know, we're going to continue supporting them. Electricity relief, uh, you know, over the last six months for even households and businesses, all of that t- taken into consideration, I think, you know, together, um, there's lots of stuff that we need to do and, and work on and, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, my friends in the restaurant industry and the uh, martial arts and gym industry would uh, would kill me if I didn't ask you this, but is there any supports coming directly to them just because they're most affected? Yeah, well, they're going to, they, so they have the access to that $300 million. Uh, they also yeah. have access to that, 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 that rent program. Um, that rent program, uh, the most significant aspect of that rent program now is it doesn't have anything to do with your landlord. It goes directly to you. It goes directly to the tenant. So that's a huge shift from before where we had some tenants that said, you know, I qualify, but I can't get my landlord to agree to it. Um, and so, you know, we work as, as, you know, the federal government has worked on that program. Um, now will be a tenant direct support. So they'll have 90% of their rent covered. They'll have 100% of their property tax bill covered. They'll have 100% of their utilities covered. Um, they can access, uh, uh, you know, from the restaurant side, they can access my, the, the, the $1,000 for the PPE program. Um, and we'll bring in, you know, there's, there's more to come. And I'm very, you know, happy to, to listen to any uh, advice from them uh, on what other support programs that the government should bring forward. So I'd, uh, I'd be more than happy to, to take up uh, any of their suggestions or conversations and bring those to the table as well. Um, and uh, Minister of Small Business and Red Tape Production, what does what do you do to support small business? What do you do personally to support small business? So you know, one of the biggest things I think we can do, especially during this pandemic, or more than any you know anything else, is really shop local um, and, and shop at those restaurants, shop at our main streets because those are the ones that are being significantly impacted right now. Um, if we all made a conscious effort to buy Ontario-made products, we would have significant impacts on the economy. We would significantly improve. Um, you know, increase whether you want to, you know, the, the, the gross domestic product or sales or um, even job opportunities for, for many of these businesses uh, and their employees and, and, their, and their families. So uh, I think that's really critical for us to, to really um, focus on, um, which is support your local businesses, shop local um, and, and shop Ontario made uh, where you can. Uh, and if you can do that, you will not only be, you know, helping and saving those small businesses, uh, but you'll also be making a very positive impact to, to uh, Ontario's economy and Canada's economy, uh, supporting not only the, the business owner, but supporting Ontario employees, uh, Ontario, Ontario manufacturing, Ontario products, which has a huge ripple effect all across the country. So where you can try to buy Ontario made, where you can shop local um, and, and especially, sh- you know, support your local uh, restaurants during the during this time as well. And the toughest question I'm going to ask you is, uh, when Doug Ford comes to Brampton, what restaurant do you take him to? <laughs> Good question. You're going to get me in trouble here. I got so many favorites. <laughs> um, honestly, I think the, the greatest thing about uh, uh, you know Brampton is we've got so many great cuisines here. Whether it's you know uh, you know downtown Brampton, we've got great like um, uh, some of the Italian. One of my favorites is Vesuvio's uh, right down in, in Brampton downtown. Panzarellis are great. Uh, we've got some great uh, uh, Indian restaurants uh, as well. Uh, one of my favorites is Anoki, which is very close to to my office as well. So it's uh, Doug Ford so like Indian food. He's you know he's he's more of a pasta and, and pizza type of guy, I think. <laughs> but uh, he he he'll try. Yeah, he he loves experimenting. So I've uh, we've had Indian food together before. He's a big fan. But uh, um, yeah, I think uh, you know it's it's always fun uh, to to try new foods as well. And I encourage everybody, especially during this time, to 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 find you know experiment to find find new restaurants to try and, and support them uh, as much as we can. And I'm gonna get you in trouble here. Your go-to. My go-to. Oh, good question. <laughs> if it's Indian food, it's uh, it's uh, it's, a, it's a restaurant called Anoki. If it's Italian, it's uh, in Brampton. It's Vesuvio. Nice. Okay. Cool. And the J Red Co was actually them. really good too. Is J Red and Co is also really amazing. There's so many good ones. I could like they're all my favorites, yeah. but uh, those are really good. Awesome. Okay, uh, Minister Sicaria, thank you so much for your time. So really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, we'll talk soon again. Take care. Thank you.